At the start of the 18th century, the keyboard, particularly the harpsichord, but also the organ to a certain extent, was an accompanying instrument. The player would sit and improvise based on the bass line, would complete um, a choral harmony, would complete an instrumental harmony, and would add to the whole effect without a specific part being written. Bach, as we know, had some amazing sons, and he himself was a phenomenal keyboard player. And he'd been experimenting quite a lot with using the organ as a specific concerto instrument. So in the beginning of some cantatas, we find a written out organ part with some really quite astonishing virtuosity for the keyboard player, presumably his prefect or him himself to play, accompanied by strings. There were other examples around, but they're very few and far between. These examples by Bach really mark the start of something quite um, unique and, and quite forward-looking. Around the 1720s, Georg Philipp Telemann founded a group called the Collagium Musicum in Leipzig. This was basically a university society, but what a university society. The great players and the great intellects would meet and play, and they would play works by Telemann and themselves. And this was a really instrumental, sort of almost an after-school club. They used to meet at Zimmermann's coffee house, right in the heart of fashionable Leipzig. And Zimmermann um, himself founded this coffee house as a, not just a place where people drank coffee, which then was still quite a special and wonderful commodity, but also to discuss theories, uh, intellectual things of the time, and just meet and be seen, and, and it was just a, a real sort of hangout spot. Interestingly, it was also um, fairly equivocal for men and women. So it was a real sort of egalitarian place and was very popular because of that. Bach took over at uh, the directorship of the Collagium Musicum and he started writing compositions, instrumental compositions primarily, for um, the meetings. And they were put on at, as concerts in the coffee house. There was no charge for these concerts. Um, Zimmermann thought he'd make enough money from coffee itself, the sales of coffee, so he really sort of would enjoy the fact that the music would supply an extra incentive to come to the venue. So Bach would use um, works that he'd perhaps already written and rearrange them for the forces he had available. There are one or two specific works we definitely knew he wrote for the meetings, including his coffee cantata and possibly his peasant cantata. But of most interest for us are these con keyboard concerto that were probably written when he came back to the directorship of the coffee house about 1738. It is unsure whether he wrote them for himself to play or for his amazingly talented sons, Carl Philipp Emanuel, Johann Christian Bach, or even Wilhelm Friedemann. We simply don't know. But what is amazing is that they are in many cases, reworkings of earlier works for other instruments. Their working for the keyboard is quite astonishing. He really makes them idiomatic for the keyboard, so he's, he's creating a texture and a sound world for the keyboard that is unlike anything else around at the time. So these, in some ways, are the first real virtuosic keyboard concerti, and quite astonishing they are too.